Oh man, it's so good. I gotta get this on Instagram. Okay, gonna check out my comments here. You know that the fat from the egg yolk goes right into the cells because of the rice cake, very fast carbs, equals insulin secretion, open the cell doorway, fat, glucose, amino acids go into the cell. You have been brainwashed by Lane Norton. What the fuck? There seems to be a common thought There seems to be a common thought running amok in the community that says that in order to optimize fat loss and even our health, we should avoid combining carbs and fat together in the same meal. That means that each meal should be just protein and carbs or just protein and fat, but never, God forbid, never ever 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 combine carbs and fat together or else you'll get fat you'll get diseases not good for health for longevity whatever i'm going to attempt to debunk that here in this video with you and show you what the actual science says and why that theory just doesn't really make sense at least to me see according to this theory you should never have a balanced macronutrient meal and honestly i get it it sounds cool it's new it's something sexy right it's better than hearing the good old proven advice of control your food intake and control your exercise activity right that's boring no one wants to hear that anymore even though it's honestly what works that's probably why so many people regurgitate it and that's probably why so many people regurgitate it without knowing what they're actually talking about or without doing any research for themselves but i get it i've been there before i've been in that place where i would just listen to whatever health influencer you know, whatever they post, and then I would, you know, talk about it. Like, I've done that before. I've learned my lesson on doing my own research and really diving deep into what the literature says. So this theory is that if you combine fats and carbs and have fats and carbs at one meal, the carbs are going to cause an insulin spike, and everything that you had in that meal is going to get shuttled into the cell, including the fat that's going to go into the cell. It's going to get stored as body fat right away. The theory is kind of all over the place. It doesn't really make sense. I'm going to attempt to debunk it here in this video here with you. And if you go on my Instagram and look at that post, I actually got that comment from someone saying that I was brainwashed by Lane Norton, which makes no sense. That comment, I'm not going to talk about it further here. We don't need to, but you can go and look at the comment. I asked multiple times, what is bad about combining fats and carbs? What are the negative effects? Can you give me some concrete evidence to your bold ass claims? Nothing. I got no answers to the questions because it's not true. And I'm going to share with you why here. And you know what? That was actually the second time I heard about that or someone told me that because in my why I stopped keto video and in the follow up video to that, t talking about my experience on a higher carb diet. In the comments, I got told bulletproof coffee and carbs, that's bad. Don't mix your carbs and fats, just don't do that. I was like, why do people think this? What's going on here? So I dove into it and that's the theory is that the carbs spike the insulin, the fat gets stored as body fat. So let's let, let's talk about that here for a second. Let's say, excuse me, sometimes when I get really into it, I forget to breathe and then it, 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 it impedes my speech. Let's say you did have a meal, okay, that was comprised of just protein and fat. That does not mean that insulin levels won't be affected. The truth is that just because a meal contains little or no carbohydrate, Ugh. excuse me, Jesus, I gotta stop drinking on video. It makes me burp. The truth is that just because a meal contains little or no carbohydrate does not guarantee that it won't affect insulin levels or insulin secretion, it still has the potential for insulin to be released. In fact, some protein rich foods raise insulin levels to a greater extent than their higher carb counterparts. That's despite the little or no changes in blood glucose levels, right? So even though protein doesn't necessarily change your blood glucose levels after consuming protein, it will still spike insulin. Now let's look at a study here that I want to share with you. 
I'll leave a link to it in the description, but it's titled An Insulin Index of Foods, the Insulin Demand Generated by 1,000 Kilojoule Portions of Common Foods. This is by Suzanne Holt and colleagues. The aim of this study was to compare postprandial insulin responses to isoenergenic, meaning uh, calories are equated to isoenergenic portions of common foods. So they took 240 calories worth, kilocalories, right? What most of us use, especially here in the US. They took 240 calories worth of common foods and compared the insulin response uh, among different people. And so if we look here at this graph, you can see that the protein sources that contain even little to no carbohydrates still had a significant insulin response. Look at the egg, the beef, and the fish. We can see insulin was still spiked Matter of fact, more so than some of these carb sources. If you look at fish and even the beef spiked a higher insulin response than mucilage, than porridge, than bran. Uh, if you look at the beef and the fish again and compare that to the brown and the white pasta, even the grain bread, similar insulin responses. Protein is insulogenic. Now, of course, it depends on the individual and how they respond, and it also depends on the protein source. But right then and there, in general, protein is insulogenic, that theory gets shut down the drain. Because even if you're just having protein and fat with zero carbohydrate, not doing the whole food combining thing, insulin's still spiked. It's this, that. But honestly, that's all irrelevant anyway. I don't even know why I'm talking about that because let's rewind to my why I stopped ketogenic diet video. Because that's gonna help put my next point into some context. There is a hormone ASP, which allows you to store fat regardless of insulin. So you do not need insulin to store. Just because you spike insulin does not mean you're gonna start, start all of a sudden you're gonna get fat, okay? So just because you eat a carbohydrate, which spikes your insulin, protein spikes is insulogenic as well, by the way, just because you eat some carbs doesn't mean that you are going to gain fat or that's gonna be stored as fat right away. So this hormone, ASP, does a decent job of storing body fat without the need of insulin. That's if you are in a net positive energy balance, okay? Which means if you're consuming too many calories, you can still gain body fat without insulin. So even in the absence of protein or in the absence of carbohydrate, there is still a potential for fat to be stored. It doesn't matter what's happening at that meal in one time. Before I move on to my next point on when combining fats and carbs could potentially be a bad thing, I wanna reference one more study by Gole A and colleagues. It's titled Similar Weight Loss with Low Energy Food Combining or Balanced Diets. And what they did is they wanted to, the goal of this was to see the effect of two different diets on body weight and metabolic parameters. It was during a six week period, 54 obese patients received two different diets. Both were 1100 calories and both were 25% protein. So calories were equated and protein was equated. And what they did is they gave one group balanced meals throughout the day, and they gave the other group their meals separating the carbs and fats to have them at separate times. And what they found was no difference in pretty much anything. Both groups had improvements in weight loss. Both groups spared the same amount of lean body mass. Both groups had improved blood markers. There was no real differences in weight loss or in body fat mass at all. As a matter of fact, the balanced meal group, the group that had their carbs and fats at the same time, actually had a little bit more fat loss than the other group separating the carbs and fats. Now, it was just such a slight difference in fat loss that it did not reach statistical significance. So in the practical world, it wouldn't mean much, but it's worth noting that the balanced meal group actually lost just a little bit more weight. Now, in what circumstances would a fatty and a carby meal or food potentially be a bad thing or be negative for fat loss in our health? because I'm not saying there's no negatives, it just depends on the context of the food. In the form of hyperpalatable, caloric dense foods that make you want to eat more, the foods that are designed to make you want to eat more, that's when it could be a bad thing. See, if you're eating a Snickers bar or a pack of Pop-Tarts, that's a lot different than having whole milk yogurt or roasted butternut squash topped with olive oil. They're both high in fat and high in carbs, but they could make you react differently to them. It's often the foods that are high in fats and high in carbs that make us want to eat more. It's those foods that just taste so fucking good, that don't fill you up, don't satisfy you, don't give you much, many nutrients at all, that trigger dopamine secretion in the brain so you get like a reward signal every time you have these, you know, these processed junk foods. That's when it can be bad because you want to overeat them. It could, you know, for some, potentially turn into a binge eating episode. But for most, 
We just want more, so we keep eating more, so we overeat. That's when it can be a bad thing. Let me put this in perspective for you. Think about eating a baked potato for a second. A dry ass, plain baked potato, no salt, no nothing. Right, pretty hard to overeat that. Remember when the potato diet was pretty popular? That's because it's really fucking hard to overeat plain baked potatoes. You end up eating in a caloric deficit because you don't want to overeat that because it's gross, so you lose weight. Now, imagine eating that same baked potato, but with sour cream in the middle, covered in shredded cheese, a nice slice of grass-fed butter right down the middle, topped with some sea salt and some chopped chives or something like that. Mm. See, now you see how you could eat that whole thing, plus another one probably with a side of steak. It's often these hyper palatable, caloric dense foods that are high in both carbs and fats, as well as salts. That's the deadly combo. That's where they get you. So it can be bad. Not because of the natural insulin spike that happens when we eat food, but because it could potentially make you overeat foods because carbs and fats is just such a tasty combination. But let me be clear. It wouldn't be bad because the insulin spike and then the fat gets immediately stored as body fat because you combine the food at the same meal. That doesn't make any sense. That's complete BS. That's not what happens. So the fact is that that whole food combining, don't combine your fats and carbs theory is total bullshit. The only true requirement for weight loss is to be in a caloric deficit. The only true requirement for weight gain is to be in a caloric surplus, a net positive or negative energy balance is required to alter your weight. But with that being said, if separating carbs and fats for you is sustainable, and that's an easy way for you to maintain your caloric goals, for, I'm sorry, that's an easy way for you to hit your caloric goals, then by all means, carry on doing it. More power to you. It's not a bad thing to do it. It's not a bad thing to not do it. For me, I, I find it unsustainable to separate my carbs and fats at each meal. It's just give me whatever I want. So I hope I shed some light on this conversation because I got this message a lot in the YouTube comments and I got that, that Instagram comment and it's like, why do people think this? It doesn't make sense. I get it. It's new. It's hot. It's sexy. It's, a, it's something cool to say, but it's just not true. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I brought you value. If you need anything, just leave me a comment down below. I reply to most of them. I definitely read all of them, but I reply to most of them. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video in any way, shape, or form. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down and give me some feedback. Don't just don't just give me a thumbs down and walk off and not tell me why. Tell me why at least. And if you did like it, uh, tell me why as well. That way I can keep doing what you like. And if you did like it as well, as, as, as well as hitting the thumbs up, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's filter through the bullshit together and figure this stuff out together. I love you. Have a good week. See you next Sunday. And...